All right, well, welcome to Math 127, uh, Coronavirus Edition Day 2. I uh, just wanted to start off with some announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, please make sure you're looking on Canvas for announcements. Uh, I'm going to spend time in the next uh, several days to get ahead on these videos. And so they're not going to have timely information. So if you want to have the most up-to-date information, please check on Canvas. Um, there is no quiz for today. Um, that there's, this was already in my plan to not have a quiz, uh, quiz for today. So uh, it just happens to be the second day that we're doing, uh, we're doing this online thing. Uh, quizzes for the future will post on either Monday or Wednesday at 1230. You will have 24 hours to do them. Uh, so they will be due either Tuesday or Thursday at 1230. Uh, that corresponds to the regular um, class start time. So that will help you sort of keep in mind when things are going to be due. Uh, virtual office hours, if you wanted to uh, do some virtual office hours, I've been using the, the um, conference tool on, on, on Canvas and it's been working pretty well so far, so we can do that. Just send me a message, let me know, and I can get set up to, to meet with you. Uh, and if you didn't see the announcement from the provost, spring break has been moved backwards, or I guess, <coughs> excuse me, I guess earlier. Um, so spring break is now next week, and so that will give me a little more time to get ahead on these videos and uh, make sure everything is ready to go for the rest of the semester. I still have to think a little bit more about exams and the final project and how exactly we're going to do that. Um, but I'm also just sort of waiting to see how the next week or so plays out before making any decisions about it. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're now in section 8.1. Uh, we're going to be looking at the first part of 8.1. Uh, there are a few things that we're going to talk about. The topics will be uh, just covering some basic language that we're going to be using for triangles moving forward. Uh, in this whole chapter, we're going to transition away from the algebra heavy back to the geometry. It doesn't mean that the algebra is gone. We're still going to use the uh, algebra. It's just the focus is going to be now on the geometry and drawing the triangles and figuring out information about triangles. Uh, then we're going to look at the law of signs and specifically we're going to look at something known as the ambiguous case. And this is the situation where uh, the law of signs gives you multiple triangles that fit the description. And so you have to be very careful with that. And we'll talk more about that when we get to it. And then the last section will just be on some applications of this in order to help us see how these uh, geometric ideas can be put to use. So up to this point in the class, we've been working primarily with right triangles or things that we broke down into right triangles. So right triangles, remember, right triangle has a 90 degree angle. We had some angle here that we would call something like theta, and we would have the adjacent side, the opposite side, and the hypotenuse. Well, we're going to leave the world of right triangles and move on to oblique triangles. So an oblique triangle is just a triangle that's not a right triangle. And so when we have oblique triangles, our labeling is going to be different because there's no longer going to be a hypotenuse. And so I'll just draw a triangle like this, close enough. The conventional notation is to use Greek letters for the angles, so alpha, beta, gamma. So I'll write those down, alpha, beta, and gamma. These are the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. And then we use regular Latin letters to label the sides. And so we always label the side opposite with a corresponding symbol. So if this is alpha, then over here is A. If this is beta, over here is B. If this is gamma, over here it's C. And so by labeling a triangle like this, we now have a consistent way of thinking about it. Opposite of the angle, or sorry, I shouldn't use the word opposite there, but the angle, well, there's no other real word for it. The angle opposite, the side opposite the angle, which is over here, um, is going to be the corresponding label. Now, when we have these oblique triangles, there are lots of ways to think about them and look at them. So I want to show you a couple different examples. No matter what triangle we have, we can always pick one side to be the base. And we normally pick that to be the horizontal side, but it doesn't have to be because we could take this picture and rotate it around. So that one's the base or that one's the base. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we just need to be able to orient ourselves to the picture. When we have a base, we also get a height. The height is always measured as the perpendicular distance from the other vertex down to either the base or the extension of the base. In this case, the, uh, the perpendicular distance down is going to meet over here. And so it's the extension of the base. If I have a triangle like this, 
then the base and the height will be measured, well, the height will meet the base. And so you might remember some basic facts about these triangles, such as the area is one half base times height. The perimeter of a triangle is the sum of the sides. Um, I should write, really write this as base times height because I've already got the letter B up here meaning something else. The perimeter is the sum of the sides, A plus B plus C, and things like that. So those basic ge geometric facts are going to be there and you're going to have to keep those in mind. 